theft, stealing from the people. It has also created a perverse incentive structure where people join public service and not the private sector to get rich. Where people's riches or poverty are easily traceable to the duration in or out of office. This will have to end. As I declared a few days ago, I am looking forward to a government that shall embark on a direct cash transfer program to the two million poorest households in the country going forward. And I will repeat, I am looking forward to a government that shall embark on a direct cash transfer program to the two million poorest households in the country going forward. This program will reach about 8 million poor Kenyans a year, given that the average size of a household across the country is four individuals. This initiative will integrate the current social protection program on which we already spend 38 billion Kenya shillings. We would add about 100 billion shillings to this and expand it to include the poorest of the poor among Kenyans. And nobody should lie to Kenyans that taxes would have to rise for this to be realized. Far from it. This shall be done with resources redirected from a range of ministries that will initially take a 25% cut in their budgets. The budget cuts will be followed by an even wider rationalization aimed at transferring government services to the poor and towards assisting the private sector, SMEs in particular, to grow and to prosper. Cash transfers will be aimed at providing immediate relief to millions of Kenyans, but they will not be the ends into themselves. They will run hand in hand with investment in long-term measures to create jobs, reduce costs of living, and secure businesses, among other needs. We will be disclosing those measures in due course. But going forward, we intend to make social welfare <coughs> a critical and urgent policy agenda in the country with the aim of restructuring and strengthening those in place while coming up with new ones. All this will be accompanied by an aggressive anti-corruption campaign that would not only save money, but also yield additional resources to be directed at protecting the poor. The figures may vary, but we are in agreement that the government is losing billions of shillings every year. We have been told Kenya is losing a third of its budget, the equivalent of about six billion US dollars, or Kenya shillings, 600 billion to corruption every year. We have also been told the country loses two billion shillings every day. I don't need to emphasize what this money can do. But I can emphasize that the, the losses can and will be stopped. The end game with all these processes shall be to create a government that cares, accounts, and caters 
in the word and deed for every single citizen, rich or poor, young or old, man or woman. We believe strongly that no single human being in our midst can or should be wasted or neglected if we are to create a great and prosperous nation. We believe Kenyans deserve a power structure and mindset that puts people first and politics last. We will make it happen by taking these first small steps. End of the statement. I think that was the statement. And um, maybe before you ask any questions, I have with me here uh, some of our experts here. One of them, Professor Wanyande, who will uh, make some remarks. And then we'll be followed by Mr. Ken Oget. Thank you very much. Um, what I want to add is this, that the statement that has been read contains a proper diagnosis of the challenges facing this country, which challenges must be addressed if we want to solve the problems of the majority of Kenyans. The diagnosis touches on at least three things. One is on governance, the management of our public affairs in this country. That has been a challenge for a very long time. But that challenge is attributed to a number of things, one of which is also contained in the statement, and that is the quality of our leadership. Unfortunately, in this country, and indeed in this part of the world, we have a tendency to give very little attention to the quality of leadership, particularly political leadership. Yet, that is so key in terms of influencing the nature of governance. And the statement we have had today does indeed address the issue of quality of leadership. We want a leadership in this country that focuses on the people. We want a leadership in this country that is committed to the interests of our people. We want a leadership that governs with a conscience, a leadership that respects values as espoused in Article 10 of the Constitution of Kenya. That has been lacking. Instead, we have had in this country, ladies and gentlemen, what we might call today opportunistic leaders. Leaders who are able to manipulate the population, particularly the poor, and then turn around and say they want to help the poor. The very poor people that they are happy to manipulate. So we are saying that going forward, and this comes from that statement, going forward we want leaders who will govern with a conscience, who will respect the poor, who will respect each and every Kenyan, because every Kenyan matters. That is so important in this, in this country. And I wanted to say also, again arising from the statement, that the program, the policies that are being espoused in that statement are actually achievable. They are achievable because they are based on careful analysis of the figures that is provided to this country by the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. So that you work on the basis of facts not on the basis of opinion. It is so important, and therefore I'm saying that really that statement, in my view, is so fundamental that Kenyans should give it a very serious thought as we move forward. I will now call upon my friend uh, and colleague to say one or two things. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Wanyan. Uh, in uh, uh, summary, really, the statement that the Prime Minister read is simply a commitment 
that he's giving to the people of Kenya. It is a pledge. Uh, it's a vow that he's making uh, before the country uh, that uh, he will work towards dignifying and uh, transforming the lives of the ordinary uh, Kenyans. And this commitment is based on a simple fact which I can loosely call the present truth. It is true, uh, friends from the media, that there are many Kenyans who sleep without uh, food. There are many Kenyans who don't have a roof over their shoulders. There are many Kenyans who don't have access uh, to uh, functional health care. There are many uh, Kenyans who simply don't have access to a quality education. To achieve this, then, uh, he is making a very clear statement uh, in uh, uh, the, 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 the st uh, very clear commitment in the statement that he read that uh, he wants to come up with uh, people based, people focused, and people oriented uh, policies that will dignify and transform the lives of ordinary uh, Kenyans. Uh, how to do this in a very general way? is that we have to change the way our politics has worked. Previously, we have had a situation and a structure that overemphasizes uh, politics. We have got a situation and a structure that really takes uh, uh, the people to government. The Prime Minister has indicated that he wants to change that and focus first and foremost on the people on the ordinary Kenyans. He wants to put a structure in place that will create an economic environment that will enable him to directly serve uh, the people of Kenya. And then that economic structure will be supported by a functional governance uh, structure. So in summary, it is people first, people second, and people third. Thank you very much. I talked about five U's. Utu, Undugu, Umoja, Usawa, and Uzalishaji. Those are the five U's. Everyone, that is summarized.